Hey guys, it's Hannah. Welcome back to The Dyslexic Reader. Today we're going to be talking about a subject that's quite close to my heart and it's when people say I can't because I'm dyslexic. As a teacher, this is something I hear students say an awful lot. And even I am guilty of saying this a couple of times myself. <laughs> everyone goes through this stage and everyone has this sort of idea, but it's not true. It's utter nonsense. We all have these moments where we put ourselves down, whether we're dyslexic or not. It's human nature. And having dyslexia is just something that you can grasp onto and blame, I think. But I don't think we should use it as an excuse to hold back and not to try. There's a lot of very intelligent, successful dyslexic out there that didn't let them hold it back. Richard Branson, Whoopi Goldberg, if you google a list of dyslexic celebrities, business people, you'll find that it's quite wide ranging. I done my dissertation on dyslexia and specifically gifted dyslexics, so people that would have a high IQ and dyslexia and I find a whole host of people and the research shows that dyslexia is a hindrance when it comes to literacy and writing but it can be a benefit when it comes to creativity and problem solving and a whole host of other things as well. So where does this mindset come from that you can't do certain things because you're dyslexic? It's because we're told it. We're told it all through our education when it's depicted of what dyslexia is. It's depicted as a problem within the brain that means that we can't read, spell, write, which is partly true, but that is the most simplified version of a definition that you can get. It is not a problem with the brain, it's a difference within the brain. And what's to say that that's a problem when, as I've already said, it can benefit in loads of different ways, including like creativity and problem solving. It just hinders spelling literacy, but it doesn't stop us from doing it. It makes it a bit harder. I was told all through my school career that high grades were not obtainable for me. They just weren't going to happen because of my dyslexia. And because of my dyslexia, then my um, is sort of classed in three categories and you have reading, comprehension and writing. Um, because those skill sets were so below my sort of peer grip ability, um, I was told that I was never going to get high grades and I never got A's and A stars. <laughs> but I did fine. I was told by teachers that I was going to completely fail exams. I was told by my career advisor not to even apply to go to teacher training college because I could not get the grades that it would take to get me in. And even if by some miracle I did, that I would never survive there. And here we are, however many years later, I didn't get the grades they asked, but I got enough to get in. I've completed my course and I, I'm a fully qualified teacher. It just takes hard work. It also comes from society. Society's opinions of dyslexics are almost, and this isn't everyone, but you know, is that they're dumb, that they're illiterate. <laughs> it's not the case. Um, I misspell words quite often and I'm not very good at reading or not reading aloud certainly and um, not reading within myself either and sometimes I have to reread several times to get the comprehension in. My spelling and grammar isn't always perfect first time round and I'd have to do a lot more editing and redrafting than other people when it comes to writing essays but <laughs> it doesn't mean you cannot do something. It's hard and you're going to have to work harder than everyone else around you. And that hard work isn't going to show. But unfortunately, everyone's dealt, dealt hands in life. And it's just one of those things that we're going to have to get over. But it comes with benefits. And it's not all negatives. I done um, my dissertation research, as I said, into gifted dyslexics. And I find that there's a lot of people out there with dyslexia that aren't being diagnosed until much later in life because it's not getting detected because they're not failing. Because they're bright enough that they're getting along without the support that their dyslexia needs. And that 
sh just shows what society's view of dyslexia is, that if you're not failing, you couldn't possibly be dyslexic. I wasn't diagnosed with dyslexia until I was in my teens. Um, my mother knew that there was something not quite right and tried to go to the school and ask them to test me and different things, but they refused to do so. They said the budget wasn't there and they wouldn't put me into that category because I wasn't failing tests. Which is the perception that people have and it's not true. And when I finally did get tested, they were sort of shocked that I had even made it so far through school without getting picked up because my dyslexia was so severe. But I'd just been able to cover it up. Um, because I wasn't failing, they said you can't possibly be dyslexic, which is utter nonsense. When we look at all the successful people who have dyslexia, about they reckon about 9%, 8-9% of people have dyslexia in some form of or, or another. And obviously some are so mildly affected that even on a test it wouldn't register but that's a lot of people in the world to be um affected with this in some way and you look at all the successful people and you think like nine percent of them um have some form of dyslexia clearly you can't let it hold you back and if you put in the hard work really nothing can stop you it's about getting over hurdles and everyone has different hurdles but of course it can be accomplished it's about proving people wrong and that's what I found really drove me when I got those opinions that told me not don't even bother trying because you're never going to get it because you're just not able to because you're dyslexic. I found that was a real motivator for me and I channeled that into something positive and I was able to push through um, for my A-levels. We have A-levels here in the UK which is the exams you said at 17, 18, sort of your final school exams that go towards university. Um, I sat three different subjects and I was told that I was going to like fail them all at best might scrape a D which is the lowest pass grade. I got three B's. I worked so hard and most of my friends got A's and A stars but I worked so hard and I got the B's and that's all I needed and I probably worked 10 times harder than most of my friends and I still got a lesser grade but I got what I needed and that hard work maybe wasn't seen or acknowledged because you're never, your ability is never going to come across on paper and that's just the sheer fact of it um, with having low literacy abilities writing something down is never going to sound as coherent as it would do coming out of your mouth and neither is your brain going to be able to put all those thoughts into words and that, that's just unfortunate that's just the way it is but it can still be overcome if you're not dyslexic and you're watching this video well done for sticking it out so far i hope it hasn't been too depressing i try to make it uplifting as possible but this is something that really irks me when people say i can't or you can't because of dyslexia dyslexia should never stop anybody from doing anything and i would just urge people really to be supportive of dyslexics and um, even if you don't know if someone's dyslexic if they're having a trouble with a word like so many people laugh make fun like assume you're stupid make jokes don't try to help like that's not helpful to anyone if they're dyslexic or not but especially if they have some form of literacy difficulty things like that can severely knock people's confidence more than you would think i've had so many jokes made about me in schools workplaces and um, just out and about where i've maybe misspelt something on a form and it's it's brought up and made like a whole big problem and a laughing point and it's really knocked my confidence back um, so that thing's kind of help people so it's just being understanding and you know um, trying to accommodate people like you, it's not something that you can look at someone and go oh we'll have to we'll have to be really really nice to them they're dyslexic like you can't tell so it's just about being helpful and understanding of everybody and knowing that everybody might not have the literacy ability that you have or the simple what you would think simple skills of being able to fill out a form or spell simple words correctly and I just need the chain the view of society to be chained the dyslexia is not oh you're, you're okay you can't spell you're dumb do you know what I mean it's not a problem it doesn't stop you from doing anything it makes you do them in different ways and that can be positive and negative. Um, I hope that this came across coherent. It's just something that's been on my mind a lot the last couple of days and I wanted to sort of put my views out there. If you have any views on this, whether you're dyslexic or not, I would like to hear them so leave them in the comments down below. If you would like to talk about this further or like more um, advice or a more private chat, 
um, feel free to direct message me on Twitter or whatever you fancy. I hope you're all happy. I hope for you're all healthy. And um, Easter break for most people is coming up. I hope you get a couple of days off and that you enjoy it. Thanks for watching my video and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.